Should you always tip your waitress? I say yes. We're going to talk about the gratuity on this episode of the Driving with Rob podcast. Welcome to the Driving with Rob podcast. It is a very, very cloudy day today, and I really need to keep my mind on my driving. So, you know, of course, I'm going to do a podcast episode. And if you are listening to this podcast for the first time, if you've never subscribed, I would ask you that you go ahead and click on subscribe or click on follow because that is kind of a a measure of your success if you're doing things right or not is how many people you get to listen, how many people you get to subscribe. So just click on subscribe, click on follow, click on like. Ever how your particular podcast listening app lets you do just to let me know that you're uh, actually listening and that you like the podcast. It doesn't obligate you to anything, but if you go ahead and subscribe or go ahead and follow the podcast, then every time I upload a new podcast, you'll get a notification to let you know. All right. So what we're talking about today or what I'm talking about today is the gratuity. Should you tip your waitress? I was reading a Facebook post that somebody had left this morning. And the post said that he had received such terrible service at a particular establishment here in town that he left a one penny tip for the waitress. And that is wrong on so many levels. Number one, don't be a jerk. One penny Really? That's just being a jerk. That's not making a statement. That's just being a jerk. But let me tell you, there are several reasons why you should always leave a tip. Number one, bad service is not necessarily that waitress's fault. Maybe half the wait staff failed to show up for work today. Maybe this one person or two people are trying their best to help customers in spite of the fact that half the wait staff called in sick today. She's going to get to you as fast as she can, or he can. Number two, maybe there's a problem in the kitchen. Maybe they're having a problem with some of the kitchen equipment. Maybe half of the cooks didn't show up today. And the cook is working as fast as he can, but the orders are still coming out to the tables late. If you're waiting on a drink order, maybe they normally have two bartenders. Today they only have one. But you shouldn't necessarily hold your wait person responsible for bad service. Maybe it's not their fault. But there's another issue with wait staff too. A lot of times the wait staff, and, and I, I'm going to use the word wait staff and waitress interchangeably because I know that there are waiters also. So if I use the term waitress or server to be politically correct... I don't mean anything by it. This is just how we talk. So let's just call them waitresses. Let's just, under the big umbrella of waitress, okay? Let me call them waitress. But that waitress you have, maybe she's just a bad waitress. Maybe she's not cut out for this kind of work. Maybe she's got some personal things going on in her life that are so overwhelming that she showed up for work anyway even though she's completely distracted and her mind is somewhere else. She needs the money. That's why she's here. A lot of restaurant owners take very, very little time training their waitresses and waiters and servers and bartenders. See, there's a lot of things that you have to learn. You have to memorize the layout. A lot of times the uh, the restaurants or or The local establishment does not have numbers on the table. So that waiter or waitress just has to know where table three is. They have to learn the order of service. They have to learn how to write down the orders correctly so that the people preparing the orders can do it correctly. They have to be observant. They have to realize this person's drink needs to be refilled. This person ordered 10 minutes ago. I need to go back and check 
to see if their order is ready. These people arrived 20 minutes ago. Has anybody taken their order yet? And you keep all these things in mind, but a lot of restaurants still don't teach customer service. And many years ago, I used to work in tech support. What you learn is there are some people who are good with customers, some people aren't. And sometimes it comes down to the personality of the person who is providing the customer service. There are some inherent things that you just cannot teach. Some people aren't cut out for customer service. And then there are some people who really are good at it, but they kind of have to learn on the job how to deal with customers because the restaurant owner or the restaurant manager never taught them that. They just taught them the mechanics of how to take the orders and get the orders out and all this stuff. So again, bad service is not necessarily the fault of the server. A lot of times your wait staff and your servers are young people, fresh out of high school, maybe still in high school. And during the, the recent presidential debates, you keep hearing the stories, or you keep hearing these candidates saying we need to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Let me tell you what the minimum wage is for your waitress. In the state of North Carolina, restaurant owners can pay waitresses, was that $3.12 or something like that? It's $3 and something is the minimum wage for somebody who works from tips or who gets a portion of their salary and pay from tips. See, there's a loophole in the labor laws that says you can grossly underpay waiters and waitresses because they work from tips. A really good waitress will make a lot more money than a really bad one. A tip is usually seen as a reward for good service. And this is another thing that restaurant owners and managers fail to teach their servers and waitstaff. The better you are at your job, the more money you'll make. The happier the customer is with you, the more money you'll make. And because you're dealing with high school kids or 20, 21, 22 year old people, they don't necessarily know that. Maybe they've necess not necessarily ever been taught that. You think it's intuitive, but try to remember when you were 18 years old. You weren't nearly as intuitive as you thought you were. But the labor laws in North Carolina allows wait staff to be paid. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's $3 and something an hour. It may even be $2 and something an hour. But now the labor law says that if they don't make enough money in tips that that restaurant owner is supposed to make up the difference so that they're being paid at least minimum wage. Well, unless you're working for a big chain restaurant that actually does have an HR department, chances are that restaurant owner or that bar owner is not making up the difference because they know that an 18-year-old kid is not going to take their employer to court, let alone take their employer to court over not being paid $50 that they were owed for that week. And that's another reason it's hard to keep good servers and good wait staff because they are so grossly underpaid. But customer service, I want to talk a little bit more about customer service. As a customer service person, and this includes waiters and waitresses, servers, flight attendants, bartenders, anybody who serves the public, anybody who has to serve customers you automatically become the face of that company. Like it or not, fair or not, that waiter, that waitress becomes the representative of that restaurant. Your server is the representative of that establishment. But keep in mind, as a customer, that 18-year-old girl has about as much control over how fast the food cooks, how well the food was cooked, the lighting, the music, they have about as much control over it as you do. Don't take it out on your waitress or your waiter or your server. See, it kind of all goes back to the golden rule, which everything does. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. See, a lot of people say, well, I believe in, in treating people fairly, but that's not the rule. See, treating people fairly in some people's mind gives them the right to be harsh and mean and judgmental if they felt like they had been mistreated. 
So that's the reason I say don't pe- don't treat people fairly. A lot of times what people are trying to do is give themselves a pass to treat other people poorly. I was treated disrespectfully, so therefore I can disrespect you. That's not how it works. That's not the intent. That's not how it was ever intended. My dad, who is a deeply spiritual man and a Jesus follower from way back, said, I thank God every day that I don't get what I deserve. So when it comes to your waiters and waitresses and servers, don't treat them fairly. Treat them the way you would like to be treated. And I've heard this excuse that if I get bad service, I just don't leave a tip. Or I tip based on how good the service was. No, you need to tip something just because that person who was serving you needs to make a living too. Maybe it's their first day on the job. And maybe the way you treated them was the straw that broke the camel's back and they quit after their first day. Treat people the way you would like to be treated and that goes for tipping. Tipping your wait staff, tipping your servers. Now here's the rule of thumb in case you didn't know. The rule of thumb for tipping is minimum 10%. What I do is tip 10% for service, 20% for good service. Whatever your bill is, just move the decimal point. If your bill is $18, you owe that waitress or that waiter a minimum of $1.80. Not a penny, not a dime, not whatever change you have in your pocket. For somebody who gave you exemplary above and beyond the call of duty service, at least 20%. Now, there's also an etiquette that says if you're at a buffet and all they're doing is refilling your drink glass, technically you don't owe them a tip because they didn't serve you the food. But they did give you service. So even at a buffet, tip 10%. So just to recap... If you left a penny or a dime as a tip, you, as the customer, understand that that is a reflection of the service you felt like you didn't get. But to the server, you're just being a jerk. You didn't teach them a lesson like you think you did. You leaving one penny or one dime did not in any way encourage that server to be better. It was just you being an obnoxious jerk. This server, this waitress, that you left no tip or an insultingly low amount as a tip is making less than half of minimum wage. If you really, really, really had a problem with the service, what you should do on your way out, ask to see the manager. Because if you really genuinely felt like you were slighted on your service, You really should take it up with the manager and not in an angry, I feel cheated kind of an attitude. If you're really concerned that you receive bad service or that the waitress you had needs more training or you felt like your server was nasty to you for no reason, ask to see the manager. Because when you leave one penny or no tip, I don't even see how that makes you feel better. But you definitely didn't help the situation. Don't even ask that wait person. On your way out, ask the hostess or try to find somebody who looks like a manager because if they look like a manager, they probably are. And privately explain to the manager what happened because humiliating this server is not going to help the server or you. It's not going to help the situation. It's not going to help the restaurant to be better. But again, just to recap, here's what you need to remember For waiters, waitresses, servers of any kind. Bad service is not necessarily the server's fault. And penalizing the server is not the way to make the situation better or to repay you for some slight that you feel like you received. It may be the server's first day. They may be shorthanded. It's not always the server's fault. Number two, the golden rule still applies even to servers. They are servers, not servants. They are not your slaves. They don't live or die based on whether they please you or not. Don't be a jerk. Treat people the way you would like to be treated. Don't treat people the way you feel like they deserve to be treated. And lastly, leave a 10% tip minimum for any service. Leave more for good service, but always 
always, always tip the waitress. And that's going to do it for this episode of the podcast. I hope you liked it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And if you would, click on like, leave me a comment, subscribe, follow, whatever your particular podcast app lets you do. And I'll talk to you next time. Thanks again. Bye now.